You're watching Taste the Victory. Digiburst is a keyword introduced in the fourth set of the Digimon TCG Great Legend that reads Digiburst, followed by the number of sources you need to trash, usually two, trash two of the Digimon's Digivolution cards to activate the effect below, followed by the effect you are paying costs for. Every color had access to it in its introductory set, including cards with generic support effects to facilitate the mechanic. While every color had base access to it, it seems as this was mainly a keyword meant for green as it had the most cards with Digiburst printed on it in this set, as well as tamers, option cards, and more Digimon than the other colors to increase the consistency of finding your Digiburst cards. This new mechanic introduced the promise of higher ceilings, stronger effects balanced by an additional cost unique to the Digimon TCG. This is Lilamon, who is a level 5 Digimon that for Digiburst 2 can suspend any of your opponent's Digimon, then allowing her or something else to attack into it. Prior to this set, there were very few cards that let you suspend an opponent's Digimon and they were all either very specific to what you could target or had heavy costs associated with it. Now you have a level 5 that can do it to anything at the cost of two of its sources. Typically in this game, the level 6s are the big boss monsters that make these kinds of plays. But Digiburst seems to introduce greater utility earlier at the cost of managing your sources. The sources in Digimon are incredibly important, doing things ranging from gaining you extra memory to continue your turn, to giving you additional DP or attack points to attack over a Digimon. With enough sources to gain DP, maybe Lilamon can attack over a Digimon it's suspended. But if you Digiburst them all away, you now need another monster on the field or a level 6 that can clean up with a when Digivolving effect. With the green starter deck that came out around the same time, Green Digiburst with Hercules Kabuterimon was actually one of the strongest decks in Booster Set 4, able to contest Yellow War Greymon who was the best deck. In comes the next set, Booster Set 5, Battle of Omni, giving old decks new support and introducing new keywords. Digiburst has been scaled back a lot with this set, with the new support for it limited to only green, black, and purple. Nothing too weird since other colors got whole new mechanics and new archetypes in this set. Green once again gets the most support for Digiburst with purple and black only getting 1-2 to two new cards each. Still in line with the concept that this mechanic is primarily for green. The new support for green was largely consistency cards to let you dig for Digibursters. In this set, we also got new Digiburst cards as promos to further support the mechanic. One of those being Grand Kuagamon gave green Digiburst OTK a powerful boost keeping it in the top decks for another set. Digiburst looked like it was in an okay spot, but things were starting to get weird in set 6. Booster Set 6, Double Diamond, is based on the movie Kazuna Last Evolution and introduces Agumon and Gabumon's Bond evolutions. However, in the entire set, Digiburst only got one new card and it was blue, and frankly, not even good. Pukumon is Digiburst 2 to gain, your Digimon can't be blocked by your opponent's Digimon this turn, which is really underwhelming for a Digimon you spent a lot of turns climbing up to since it is a level 6. Such a huge cutback on Digiburst is kinda weird and gets weirder when it didn't even go to the color it's mainly associated with. Maybe you don't want to take away from the movie theme and you don't necessarily need support in every single set. It didn't get support in the next set either though, X1. Though, to be fair, this was a small themed set. In Booster Set 7, we did get one new Digiburst line in Harrismon, but once again, these are the only ones for the entire set. After Booster Set 7, we never saw another new Digiburst card again. Booster Set 14 is being revealed currently in Japan as of the time of this video and the keyword has thoroughly been left in the past. What happened? There are three likely reasons Digiburst may have been left in the past. These will be running on the assumption that the Digimon TCG sets are designed about 2-3 to three sets in advance. This is backed up by an interview with the new Digimon TCG producer, Koei Murata, where he stated that when he was put in charge in April 2022, his first project was to design the reprint set RB01 Rising Wind, which did not release until December 2022. We also generally never get upcoming set details leaked more than a couple months ahead and no details of upcoming sets more than a couple sets ahead. So anyways, the reasons. The first reason of three, helping to balance black. The previous Digimon TCG director has been interviewed in the past to celebrate releases of new sets. In an interview to celebrate the release of BT6 Double Diamond, the previous director acknowledges how the team has heard the complaints of black being a color that is way too weak compared to the rest and briefly touches on the difficulties of balancing six colors. In the early sets of the game, black was too defensive of a color and very slow. So while in theory you could set up a big board of blockers, you couldn't aggro enough and decks would just keep deleting your blockers through battle or effects until you run out of resources or just plain lose. Besides blocker, black also had the somewhat unique keywords reboot to help you be more aggressive and still be able to block by restanding your blocker at the start of your opponent's turn, and D-Digivolve as another mostly unique to black offensive tool to set back your opponent after they invested into a stack. Neither was too terribly good in the beginning of the game though. 
In the case of the Digivolve, the problem was that this effect was mostly put on option cards. So this effect was often either too expensive and your opponent could just recover next turn, or too slow because instead of spending that memory to continue climbing, you spent it to mildly annoy your opponent at best. The rules of the keyword states it stops at level 3 too, so this thing couldn't even be used as a deletion effect. Ultimate Flare was the best option for D Digivolve for the longest time because it had a strong payoff to delete all things with 3 or less cost in addition to the D Digivolve. Nowadays in the game, D Digivolve is actually a really good keyword because a lot of Digimon have it as a keyword when they Digivolve, fixing both of the problems that it had at once. Keep in mind how the last Digiburst line we ever got was in Booster Set 7 after already cutting back on it two sets prior. In BT9, we see multiple powerful monsters introduced with the keyword that also have another effect printed on them to either take advantage of the D Digivolve, use it early through cheating costs, or self-fuel the effect. All three of these cards were very important to their decks and the D Digivolve let them safely swing over or delete tough opposing monsters with a follow-up effect. When D Digivolve is used on a card with no sources, it simply does nothing. If Burst was a strong mechanic in every color that constantly saw use, D Digivolve would be even worse, practically useless. Barely any viable targets because all boss monsters would have already bursted away all of their sources or bursted them away in a way that still leaves them in a good spot even if you D Digivolve it. D Digivolve had already been established as one of the identities of Black like how Blue has Source Strip by now, so to give Black the small boost and ensure D Digivolve could continue being a viable method of offense, Digiburst may have been quietly retired. The second likely reason is on the other end of the spectrum. It would make Source Strip too good. If you've been playing the Digimon TCG for a while, you might remember the terror that blue and yellow hybrids were. I have a video briefly summarizing it you can click on now in the top right corner. These decks needed multiple nerfs on the ban list to finally stop terrorizing the competitive scene. Japan had it even worse than us with the combo involving Mega Digimon Fusion and Susanumon that thankfully got banned before we had the chance to deal with it. The developers likely had an idea of making blue hybrids one of the stronger decks, but may have not anticipated just how good they were when they were designing the set. Blue Hybrid strips the bottom sources of your opponent's Digimon until they have none left. Then, Ikakumon would Digivolve over another hybrid already Digivolved over Tommy to stun something without sources, meaning the target cannot attack or block for a turn. And then that Ikakumon would attack to stun another thing with Tommy's Inheritable effect. With just how easy it was to set this off, it was a very frustrating deck for many players to play against as it basically stopped you from playing the game. Now imagine how much more dominating blue could have been in a meta with Digiburst everywhere. You'd have to strip much less sources making it easier to stun faster. If any Digiburst archetypes besides green OTK were still the main strategies for a color, those colors would likely be nigh unplayable into this meta. We brought up at the beginning of this video how the last really big round of Digiburst support ended in Booster Set 5, lining up with the two sets ahead design theory. There were some new ones in the same set that introduced all the hybrid support, but they were mostly filling in generic effects that yellow still did not have up until this point almost like a cap off tying up any loose ends to send off this mechanic. Since the Susanomon MDF combo was introduced in BT7, players in eastern regions had to play against this for 5 months until MDF was banned on February 1st, 2022 in eastern regions. This could have likely made designing more Digiburst cards unappealing as they would have done bad into these formats and be less desired by the player base while the devs were deciding what to ban or limit to address the current problem decks, and how future decks could contest these hybrid decks. And we do get an idea of how they designed in response to these decks two sets later in a rather infamous set that was likely the final nail for Digiburst. Booster Set 9, X Record. Man, it always comes back to this set in the end, huh? Booster Set 9 introduces the X antibody line of Digimon to the card game and our final reason for the disappearance of Digiburst. X antibody Digimon can Digivolve for free over their corresponding base counterpart and gain additional effects if they do so. X antibodies exist at every level, so potentially you could load up on stacks with the corresponding level 3s and 4s and have a powerful level 5 or 6 Digiburst Mon loaded with so much extra ammo. We already know what a strong deck Grand Kuagamon was and still has been once it got access to Gratis Kuagamon, giving it a more powerful top end to its strategy that can also answer the board while checking security. It didn't actually rely on the strategy to abuse a big X anti stack though. It used cards that gained effects from being discarded with Digiburst and actually opted to forego X Antibody Digimon besides Akuamon X because its mini Ice Wall effect is so useful. Grandis Kuakamon already does anything the Digiburst cards would have done anyways, such as Lilamon's suspending effect and attacking over something to delete a Digimon instead of just stunning it with Raphalashamon. A pretty specific power creep. If we look at 
other successful X antibody decks and their corresponding colors, we see that their Digibur strategies never really took off. Red and blue had thematic to their color, but ultimately low impact Digibur's effects, they were at best meta dependent like the Geo Greymon on screen, and just relegated to tech choices. Meanwhile, their X antibody strategies were some of the best, and as of this video, are still able to compete. So with not as much tools to abuse, the devs may have felt more comfortable making these X antibody colors more powerful. Metal Guru Room on X sure did end up more powerful, sheesh. The other best X antibody deck from that time period is where it gets interesting. The Alphamon line was incredibly powerful because of being able to stack multiple security plus one effects and Oryukin giving you basically a second turn easily. The power creep on the secret rare was pretty absurd to the point where there wasn't much point in deviating from the standard list with any experimentation. However, towards the end of the BT9 format, we did see some really interesting decks start to come up with Black Metal Gururumon for Booster Set 5. This deck would run the same standard Alphamon list but with a very interesting top end of BT5 Black Metal Gururumon and BT9 Metal Gururumon, with the extra sources not just from the X Antibody line, but also from effects in the deck placing additional cards underneath it, you were able to get multiple Digibursts off to either trash a lot of security, which is invaluable, or clear board. And because of the Black Evolution box, you could unsuspend and attack again with BT9 Metal Gururumon for only one memory. This deck won some events like Gaia Force Gaming, but the ban list that came out only a couple of weeks later meant to nerf Alphamon also indirectly hit it since it lost access to multiple Doru Grey. Unfortunate for a very cool deck, but it gave us a peek into how these big stack decks may have boosted Digiburst had the keyword continued. Similarly, throughout the 2022 season Digimon Nationals Tournament, which took place in February 2023, we saw many Black War Greymon X decks include promo Digiburst Black War Greymon as a tech choice, to suddenly shift to an Otiki strategy if the opportunity arose, taking advantage of all the sources and security plus one effects this deck would have. Avoiding these two strategies compounding into some kind of more problematic variant may very well have been something the devs kept in mind when designing X Antibody. We ultimately can't say for certain unless a developer could be interviewed, but between everything, I think it's very likely that some combination of these three suggested reasons led to forgetting Digiburst. When it was introduced, I thought using the sources that otherwise have powerful effects as a trade-off was a brilliant way of using one of the core aspects of the game. But it seems like as more mechanics are introduced, it would have made some of the things the devs wanted to do with the game more difficult. Have fun digibursting away your ace level 4s and 5s. Ultimately, the game has power crept to a point where you don't really need the mechanic anymore anyways. So many ridiculous when digivolving effects now would have been digiburst effects before, but instead they just exist as normal effects. I don't think I want to see how much you would need to power creep digiburst effects to bring them back to relevancy now. In the end, mechanics come and go, and the future of the game still looks bright. I had fun playing with Digiburst while I was here, looking into why it may be gone, and look forward to many new exciting mechanics. Let me know if you missed Digiburst and think they should have kept supporting it. I'll see you guys in the next video, and until then, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.